I came up in the same situation where everything was a sin. And where not only if you, if you failed, um, it was not a private thing. Uh, we, we had saints meetings on every Friday. And that meant that you had to get up in front of the saints, tell your confession, and then they would probe you. Who with, where, when, how many times, and then sometimes they'd ask you, did you enjoy it? Amen. Now, that is not an exaggeration. That's right. At all. And, and so the purpose historically became penal rather than restoring. And the text says, brethren, if, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, you restore such a one. And so I really believe that our purpose ought to be restoration. Uh, we are not in the business of killing folks. We're in the business of saving folks. And historically, now let me, let me just say one thing. There was some positive benefit to that. There's a difference between confessing and admitting because I got caught. There's, there's a difference between I got caught, I exposed, so I admit. But true confession comes from a repented heart. And I think when we deal with people with a repented heart, we should not deal from the standpoint of being, of applying penalty. Restoration, as I understand it, you can help me. You all don't mind, uh, Bishop Moore and I have the kind of relationship that uh, he, he, he's my Uncle Clarence. Uh, I've called him that. I've had that kind of relationship. But I think too often we are going at people based upon an attitude that we're perfect. And I, I try, th that scripture says, that we should consider ourselves. And uh, Jesus made it clear to us we ought to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. So I think we, we need to talk about this from the standpoint of restoring rather than penalizing. I've been sat down where I couldn't testify, couldn't read the scripture, couldn't sing a song, couldn't lead prayer, and the spirit got high in church, and I got up and wanted to shout, and they sat me down. Said, you don't have a right. You don't have anything to shout about. Well, first of all, they didn't know my heart. They didn't know where I was coming from. So I don't think we ought to be penalizing folks under certain circumstances. I think there's sometimes that correction re is required. It is required. But I think we ought to do that even in love. Open discipline that they used to give us sometimes didn't make us better. Sometimes it made us slick. You learn how to cover every track. Hmm? I mean, I learned if this thing was laying here, I look and see that this was on that H, and it was laying right even with that. And I learned when I put it back, I put it back just like it was, and nobody ever knew I moved it. You learn to cover your tracks. That's, so a lot of times, the kind of that discipline we had wasn't really helpful. Sometimes it was helpful, though. As he said, it would scare, what'd you say? It would scare something. <laughs> but but, uh, but uh, it was, it, was uh, it made us sleep. I really believe that uh, what that scripture is really uh, saying to us them that sin before all, then you rebuke them before all. 
Uh, I, in other words, I think the patch, the bandage, should be as big as the sore. If the sore is under my shirt, then I will put the bandage under my shirt. And if you didn't see the sore, you won't see the bandage. So you wouldn't know that I was being treated for my malady. Now, if my sore was up on my forehead, or on my, then you got to put the bandage up there, and everybody would know something's wrong up there. They'll know I had a problem. They'll know it's being treated. But uh, it'd be stupid for me to put the bandage under my arm or under my shirt and leave the sore open. So I believe that's what that scripture is saying. If there's sin before all, if a person commits a public sin, then the public has to know that he has, that it's been dealt with. So then that, that leads me to an issue here because my dealing, and I feel the same way, that in my dealing there are people who are in our congregation who are, they're, they're kind of covertly disciplined. And uh, how do you address that? Because sometimes, is, is it, do you feel that there's a one size fits all discipline for this type? Say for instance, there's one infraction, one infraction, and uh, member A has violated the church standard, or the biblical standard. Member B has violated the church standard, the biblical standard. But member A is disciplined differently than member B. Does that happen and why? Well, obviously it does happen. And I think sometimes there's reasons for that. I think the pastor and the leader has to deal with each case individually. Uh, as a pastor, if someone comes into my office voluntarily and says to me, Pastor, I've fallen short, I need restoration. I'm going to take care of that in the privacy of my office. There's no need of me exposing that. I'm not going to help anybody else by exposing that. Now this other individual has done something that's openly known and has brought some reproach on the church and on, on the, the ministry. That has to be dealt with differently. The sin, the, the act may have been the same, but I think again there's a difference between confessing and admitting. Some folks, when they get caught, and they know they've been caught, they will admit that they've done wrong, but they don't necessarily have a repentance. Restoration heart. is putting something back in the same position it was in before it fell. When you check that word out, restoration, restore means to mend, to make whole. And that ought to be the desire of every pastor, is to make that individual whole, rather than to create a, an environment and a situation where he is still broken. Uh, I wanna, as a, a pastor, I want folks to be whole. And whatever I have to do to make them whole, sometimes you have to, they set us down. Y'all heard of that, they put us on punishment, set us down. I've been there too. My father was, he set you down for shooting marbles when you weren't supposed to. Uh, the Bible said marvel not. <laughs> uh, everyone that is baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost is not instantly delivered. There was a young man who came to our, to our to a church on Wayne Street and he got baptized. And it uh, seemed to me like he received the Holy Ghost. I don't know. It's been so long, I don't remember exactly. But anyway, uh, just a few, I believe he did, was supposed to receive the Holy Ghost in a revival or something. A few days later, somebody saw him. Uh, he 
he had been kind of drinking, drinking the alcohol. And as one of the members that said, it was told to me, one of the members said to him, said, here, you, you done, you're out now, you're out. And I didn't have a chance, he never came back. He never came back to church because one of the members who's supposed to know what he's talking about, one of those strong, stalwart members, told him, you are out. This, this. So uh, I think it, pe people need to realize that uh, th it's not all discipline is, I mean, they're not, they're not qualified to administer the discipline. It's not for deacons to do it. I wish y'all could hear me. This is not the deacon's job. This is the pastor's job. See? Deacons have, they're not, they're not the spiritual overseers of the congregation. And so, uh, you know, I, I don't put deacons up to do stuff that I'm supposed to do. I ain't no, ch be that chicken. And, uh, and uh, they, uh, so, so they, that, that's one way it can be ruined. Another thing, chase discipline. Now, how to spell it? Discipline seems to me like it's kin to the word disciple which has to do with teaching or training. And so discipline is for correction. Yep. This man that Bishop spoke about in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, is it? Where he says, uh, Paul says, I would that you would uh, disfellowship him. Uh, Deliver such an one over to Satan to say? for the destruction of the flesh. That for the, the destruction spirit. of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved yeah. in, in the, the day, day of the Lord, Lord Jesus. So whatever they do, it should be for their salvation. From this particular point of scripture, the qualifier for, Christi for spirituality, speaking to the church, the qualifier for spirituality, the test is not that you speak with tongues, not according to this verse. It's not how you lay hands on the sick and they recover according to this verse. The test of the spiritual one is not that you are so high that you are not approaching the ground when you walk. Amen. According to this verse, the test for the spiritual one is that you work with all, all that is within you to restore those who have fallen. Amen. Spirituality. And so our test of spirituality for those who are spiritual speaking not just to the pastors, but speaking to all those who are spiritual, ye who are spiritual, if a man, and this is not a gender reference, if someone, man or woman, be overtaken in a fault, spiritual people will not talk about them. Spiritual people don't try to kill them. Spiritual people will do all in their power to bring them back to a place of wholeness to restore them. 